Good morning. I want to thank everyone for uh, for joining us on this beautiful San Diego day. Uh, we uh, apologize for the for the weather, but I appreciate everyone being here today. Um, you know, in the first six months of this new board of supervisors taking office, you have seen a new attitude, uh, a fresh perspective, uh, a new take on old challenges, and an absolute commitment from our county uh, to use our resources and our, our ability to influence and help support those uh, who for many decades were left out of the equation, uh, who were often ignored or unseen uh, when it came to your county government. And today we stand before you with a clear message from the chair and the vice chair of the Board of Supervisors that in San Diego County, we value our immigrant community. We value and appreciate our immigrants and our refugees. We appreciate their contribution to our community. We appreciate all that they do and have done, and we will match those values with our actions. San Diego County will be a leader when it comes to taking in and supporting refugees. We will also be a leader in supporting our immigrant communities. Oftentimes, our immigrant communities remain disconnected from available resources uh, due to many misguided policies. And as a county, we are committed to changing that. More than three years ago as a candidate for this office, I committed that we would help our immigrants in this county and in particular, we would establish an office of immigrant affairs, immigrant and refugee affairs. In 2019, when I came in, we had to take immediate challenges when the Trump administration ended the safe release program, taking the old family courthouse downtown as a shelter for asylees. We're all aware in the recent months what we've had to do with the convention center right, for our unaccompanied minors who are here. And as a county, we know that we will continue uh, to face the need to be of service to our immigrant community. And we're here today to continue to move forward with our framework for the future to ensure that we are a welcoming place for all, regardless of your race, your ethnicity, your religion, your sexual orientation, or regardless of your country of birth. You are welcome in San Diego County and your community is here to stand with you and support you. The Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs we are proposing, myself and Vice Chair Nora Vargas, and I want to make a note, Nora Vargas being the first Latina, the first woman of color, the first immigrant to serve on this Board of Supervisors. And her presence here to help drive and elevate these issues uh, is a vital and important step forward uh, as we move forward in the creation of this office, we'll institutionalize within the county the commitment that we and this board have espoused. It will institutionalize in our organization, in our staffing, and also in our culture, that we welcome our immigrant communities and we stand here to be a resource and an assistance to them in terms of what they bring. We know our immigrant communities work exceptionally hard. We know they pay taxes into programs they can often not access. We know they are far less likely to commit crime or be on public assistance than those who are born here. We also know our immigrant community is a part of who we are because it is a part of our American story. And it's time we recognize that. And it's time that we value that. We also know in San Diego County, with a county government that has not stepped up for years, we faced a tremendous burden on a lot of our partners because they have stepped in time and again to fill the void. And those organizations, so many of them are represented here today, and we appreciate all that we've done, and we now pledge ourselves to move forward as a partner and as an ally, not just with our words, but our resources. And I want to thank those Invest in San Diego Families, Moss Pace, San Diego Rapid Response Network, Jewish Family Services, San Diego Immigrant Rights Consortium, Border Angels, San, San Diego Refugee Community Coalition, Karen Organization of San Diego, the Mac, Mac Project, and these are just a few of the over 80 community faith-based service and labor organizations uh, who have been working with us to establish this office, but also have been working to meet this need for many, many, many years. The board, uh, we hear you. We know as a county we need to step up and take action, and we are doing that. This Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs will be a regional asset, proactively engaging with the community, providing information, education on important topics, including knowing your rights, campaigns connecting individuals and family to critical county and community resources. This office will remain connected to the community, convening stakeholders to ensure that the services they are offering are what the community needs and when there are gaps, informing the Board of Supervisors about those gaps and policy changes to try and overcome those challenges. This office will partner with the Public Defender's Office 
of assigned counsel to create a link for referrals to the board created immigrant rights legal defense program for detained immigrants facing deportation and can help connect individuals to trusted legal resources in the community. This office will also work to explore the possibility uh, of creating a permanent sheltering for immigrants and refugees who are transitioning into our community. Again, time and again, we scramble to find a location to meet the need. And when it comes to having dedicated resources for people that are fleeing wildfires or earthquakes or other natural disasters, we do a great job. Well, let's put that same spirit towards helping our immigrant and refugee community. I believe this office is incredibly important. I think it's not a, just a symbolic, but a substantive step that this county is taking. Uh, and it's my hope that the board will support our efforts. Throughout each generation of our history, immigrants and refugees have uh, enriched our nation. They've made us better, stronger, more innovative. They've made us safer, and they've made us more prosperous. The American story includes the story of courageous families who bravely ventured here, be it centuries ago or just this year, from every part of the world seeking new possibilities. They have shaped our country and shaped our culture, and it's important we do our part to, to pay back. Immigrants and refugees are innovators, workers, entrepreneurs, community leaders who have fortified and defended us, spared us, and cared for us, advanced the limits of our thinking, and broken new ground. And yet our county's history shows us they have not often received the services that are critical to their success uh, and are a vital obligation that I think we have the creation in this office will move us in a positive direction in San Diego County, and I could not be more excited uh, to now be in a position to bring this back, and in particular, more excited uh, to have as a partner, uh, as someone, uh, an ally, uh, someone uh, I am pleased to follow the lead as she, as, she, as she powers through everything we need to do to uh, better serve the needs of our immigrant communities. Uh, it gives me tremendous joy every day to come to work. Uh, and know that I have the opportunity to serve alongside Nora Vargas. Uh, we're thrilled she's here, and I appreciate her energy uh, and effort on this issue and so many others. Please join me in welcoming uh, Vice Chair of the Board of Supervisors, Nora Vargas. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. Good morning, buenos dias. Welcome, and thank you everyone for being here today. We appreciate you so much in this beautiful weather in San Diego, but Talk about immigrants being resilient, right? We, uh, we get it done. I'm really proud to join co my colleague, Chair Fletcher, and our community partners this morning to announce that tomorrow, we're gonna be introducing this, the creation of the Office of Immigrant Affairs and Refugee Affairs. Honestly, this is very personal to me. For the last couple of decades, our communities have been under attack. My own activism steamed from the fear mongering that Proposition 187 caused in our communities. And now, as the first immigrant serving on the San Diego County Board of Supervisors, I want to share, make sure we create a more welcoming environment for every resident in the county of San Diego. Because you know what? It is hard, right? I mean, I am the first immigrant serving on the board, and I want to make sure that we have a welcoming environment. It is hard. It is hard to be the first. And as, but it, when you are the first, you also have an, a lot of opportunities to bring your knowledge and your experience and that's what we're doing here today. I had to integrate into this country. I had to learn the language, learn the educational system, navigate, navigate corporate and government systems to get the job done and to begin to have opportunities. It's time to make sure that those changes are made on a system that really wasn't made for any of us. We wanna make sure that government works for everyone, not just some. So through the Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs, we're gonna work to uplift our immigrant communities, change the narrative, and highlight the positive economic and cultural impact they have in our region. San Diego is one of the largest settlements of refugees in the nation. And as an international, multilingual, multicultural region, it is time for San Diego County to lead in addressing the needs of our immigrant and refugee communities. 20% 20, 20 of our population was born in a different country. 68 languages are spoken in this region. We are a vibrant and colorful community that is strong because of the economic and cultural contributions from our immigrant residents. With the Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs, we're gonna be able to further our vision of building healthier and stronger communities by connecting individuals and families to the many services offered by the County of San Diego. We are, after all, the safety net for residents of our region. By creating this office, we will create a path 
for families and individuals so that they can integrate and participate in our civic society. So that every resident, regardless of their background, country of origin, or immigration status, can have the service and resources they need to live their own dream. I am so grateful to our coalition of community partners that have worked with us, and I am really happy to see all of them today. A special thank you goes to every organization, the county in the county that has been supporting our immigrant and refugee communities uh, for so many years. My commitment is to continue to work so that our government works for all of our people, and I urge the rest of our board to vote in favor of the creation of this office tomorrow. And I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to work with Chair Fletcher as we move this uh, initiative forward. Me siento muy contenta de poder estar aquí con todos ustedes. Y, y muchas gracias a mi colega, el presidente de la Junta de Supervisores, eh, Nathan Fletcher, porque esta mañana tenemos el, la gran oportunidad de anunciar que mañana presentamos ante la Junta de Supervisores la creación de la Oficina de Asuntos de Migrantes y Refugiados. Durante las últimas dos décadas, nuestras comunidades han sido atacadas. Mi propio activismo se originó del, medio que, del miedo que provocó la proposición 187 en nuestras comunidades. Y ahora aquí estoy con ustedes como la primera inmigrante en servir en la Junta de Supervisores del Condado de San Diego. Quiero asegurarme de crear un ambiente más acogedor para todos los residentes del Condado de San Diego. Porque sí es muy difícil, es difícil ser la primera persona, la primera persona que vive, que, que está en este país, con muchas veces como a nuestras familias le sucede. Yo fui la primera en mi familia a integrarme al país para aprender el idioma, aprender el sistema educativo, na navegar el sistema corporativo y gubernamental para hacer mi trabajo, el trabajo que hago hoy. Es tiempo de hacer un cambio en un sistema que no fue creado para nosotros y así hacer que el gobierno trabaje para todos. Como región multicultural, internacional y multilingüe, es importante que el Condado de San Diego sea líder en proveer recursos y servicios que ayuden a cubrir las necesidades de estos miembros de nuestra comunidad. En San Diego se estima que el 20% de la comunidad proviene de otro país y más de 68 lenguajes se hablan en esta región. Somos una comunidad muy diversa que es fuerte por la contribución que hace nuestra comunidad migrante a la economía y a la cultura de la región. Mañana la Junta de Supervisores votará para aprobar la creación de esta oficina y será el primer paso en establecer una red de apoyo y servicios para esas familias e individuos en nuestra comunidad. La comunidad migrante juega un papel muy importante en la fuerza laboral y económica de esta región. La oficina va a servir para brindar apoyo a esas personas por medio de servicios y recursos que ayudará a integrar a los individuos y a las familias a nuestra comunidad. Como inmigrante, sé lo difícil que es para muchas de estas personas y familias. Al crear esta oficina, estamos creando esta oportunidad de integración. Agradezco muchísimo a todas las organizaciones que están colaborando con nosotros. Muchísimas gracias a todas las demás organizaciones a través de esta región que por tantas décadas han trabajado en esta causa. Yo me comprometo a seguir trabajando para que nuestro gobierno trabaje para todos nuestros residentes. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Vargas. Next, uh, we have with us uh, from Jewish Family Services, Michael Hopkins, our CEO. Jewish Family Services played a vital role in helping families seeking asylum, uh, both with the Trump administration into the Safe Release Program, and we were fighting for temporary shelters in my district. Uh, but JFS has also continued to step up time and again beyond that. They're part of the San Diego Rapid Response Network, the nonprofit heroes who got donations, volunteer transportations, and, and really made a tremendous uh, difference. And, Michael, we're incredibly grateful to JFS and all that you have done and thrilled to have you here as a part, as a part of the partnership. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Michael Hopkins, CEO of Jewish Family Service. Uh, first, I want to thank Chair Fletcher and Vice Chair Vargas uh, for their continued leadership in helping to make San Diego County a welcoming place for men, women, and children who have struggled and fought through countless horrors to, um, to improve their lives here in the United States. Um, as Nathan said, as one of the primary refugee settlement agencies here in San Diego, um, as well as the operator of the migrant shelter for asylum seekers, um, we know how valuable an office for immigrant and refugee affairs will be for providing a hub uh, for immigrants in our region to access the critical services and resources they need to rebuild their lives. 
critical services like those offered at Jewish Family Service, which, have been, which has been involved in aiding immigrants since our founding in 1918 and carrying out our tradition of welcoming the stranger. We affirm our Jewish values and honor our country's history of um, welcoming refugees and, and we know that this country has been built by a generation of immigrants. Um, to put this in perspective, in the last decade, Jewish Family Service has helped close to 3,000 refugees here in San Diego County. Our dedicated staff and volunteers help them build a new life and adjust to, uh, to life here in San Diego. On any given day, we help families enroll in school, learn and improve their English, help them navigate banking and transportation, further their education and employment, and become meaningful contributors to our community. Um, and as Nathan said, when in October of 2018, um, federal immigration authorities began releasing dozens of asylum seekers on our streets here in San Diego without warning, without money, without transportation or shelter. Uh, JFS and our partners at the Rapid Response Network um, stepped in to provide food, shelter, clothing, legal services, transportation. In the last two and a half years, we have helped more than 30,000 vulnerable families and individuals connect with loved ones across the county, across the country, excuse me, as they wait to continue their legal process uh, to gain asylum. Uh, together with the creation of uh, San Diego's own Office for Immigration and Immigrant and Refugee Affairs, we can continue to empower those newcomers who are seeking a brighter future for their families while building a stronger, healthier, and more resilient San Diego. Thank you. Next up, uh, the executive director of Moss Pace. Moss Pace is a part of the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. Uh, they have organized and advocated for the creation of this office for a long time. Uh, they are one of the groups that we regularly turn to as a county when we're looking for advice, and they were integral uh, in bringing together uh, this policy today, uh, and we are incredibly grateful to them. Uh, and it's my, uh, my, my privilege to introduce their executive director, uh, Ismahan Abduhali. Good morning, my name is Ismahan Abdullahi. I serve as Executive Director of Mass Pace and part of the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. We are here today and we understand that San Diego is a home to a large immigrant and refugee population, especially as a binational city. This Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs is definitely long overdue. Our coalition and members of the larger San Diego and refugee immigrant communities had been advocating for a very long time, as Chair Fletcher mentioned, for us to establish such an office. We dared to dream. And today, with gratitude to Chair Fletcher and Vice Chair Vargas, that dream is close to becoming a reality. It is critical that we build an inclusive city, an inclusive county that prioritizes our vulnerable communities that have often been left behind. Faced with the challenges of adjusting to a new country and the systems within that country, and facing and navigating language barriers and other challenges and lack of equitable access to basic needs, this office will send a message of hope and improvement for our refugee and immigrant communities. The creation of this office also sends a message of belonging, a message that the needs of the immigrant refugee communities matter, especially for our newcomer families. As a refugee myself, who had to figure out everything with my family as we go if, because of an office like this did not exist during the time that we were newcomers. So this office represents us leading the way forward. And I know this office means a lot to our refugee immigrant communities who've been advocating this for a very long time. Connecting available resources and identifying where there are gaps can save and impact lives. When my family faced in food insecurity decades ago, as newly resettled refugees. If we had an office like this, if we knew where to go, that one-stop shop that can give us access that were, uh, to services that were available, and being able to communicate some of those needs, it would have had an impact in our lives early on. I know that our refugee and immigrant community is resilient and strong and creative in trying to survive. But an Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs that is culturally competent will let them know that they are not alone in that process and that there is a county that, that is prioritizing their needs and that they belong in this county. Thank you.
Next up is uh, Arnulfo Manriquez. He's the uh, president and CEO of the MAC Project. When Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra uh, reached out to us and asked if we could help with the unaccompanied minors, this was one of the groups that we reached out to immediately. Uh, time and again, whether it's responding to COVID, responding to immigrants, this is an organization and group that we have relied on. Uh, and we appreciate all that all of these groups have done over the years. Uh, and now you have a county that wants to step up and shoulder our share of the load alongside you. But we're so grateful for, uh, for all, all you do, and we're thrilled to have you join us. Thank you. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Thank you, uh, Chair um, Fletcher. Thank you, Vice Chair Vargas. My name is Arnulfo Manriquez. I'm a President and CEO of MAC, and we are in full support of the policy to create the Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs. MAC has a 56-year history of working with immigrants throughout the county of San Diego, and it is something that we are absolutely proud of the work um, that we do. We work in the areas of education, health, housing, economic development, and leadership and advocacy, and a big part of the work that we do focuses and sent around uh, immigrants. When the county asked us to participate and be a part of the unaccompanied uh, youth in the county, uh, San Diego Convention Center, we were absolutely stepped up and we have seen the value, the strength of collaboration, the strength of having one central hub of organizing and coordinating services to the immigrant community. It absolutely works, it's important. April 16th, 40 years ago, I remember that my parents sat my four sisters and I at a table and let us know that we were all gonna move to the United States. I was born in Mexico and all of us were very upset. My mother told us, I know that you're upset at me. Sé que no están felices, pero un día me van a agradecer esta decisión. I know that you are not happy at me, but one day you will appreciate this decision that we've made. And we have not gone a single day appreciating that decision that our parents made. It was hard work, they struggled, we all struggled, my sisters and I struggled, and it is something that we have understood what it means to live as an immigrant, to learn, to navigate many things through ourselves, but we also had friends, we had family that were able to help us. Many immigrant families don't have that, and this central hub will be key in absolutely helping coordinate the services to the immigrant and refugee communities, not just through the county services, but through the array of collaboration between the other organizations that are providing services like MAC throughout the county. We look forward to this office being created, and we look forward to being a part of helping through this process. Thank you. Our uh, next speaker, uh, Dulce Garcia, is the executive director of Border Angels. Border Angels have been fighting for humane immigration reform and social justice for many, many years. Uh, Dulce serves as the chair of the Immigrant Rights Consortium, which has been at the forefront of uh, immigrant rights. Uh, we are thrilled to have you join us and appreciate all that you do every day. Thank you. Buenos dias. This year, I do have the great honor of serving as the chair of the San Diego Immigrant Rights Consortium, which brings together over 50 diverse organizations across San Diego County. <laughs> uh, in San Diego County that advance the policies of civil and human rights of immigrants and refugees. The creation of this office is a step in the right direction. I am undocumented in the U.S. after arriving in 1987 for over 33 years. My family and I, still undocumented without a path to citizenship, have endured the horrible attacks in our community based on hate, the hateful rhetoric that still continues to surround our community and that was elevated in the last few years by the federal administration. This hub will be a place for us to learn about our rights, to learn about resources available in our community to keep our families safe. The hardships endured during the COVID-19 pandemic further expose how these spaces are absolutely necessary. Our undocumented community has often been ignored, 
left out of policies, including the federal economic stimulus packages, and that has had several devastating impacts. Le quiero dar mu muchísimas gracias a todas las organizaciones que continúan peleando para familias como la mía, como tantas en, en el condado de San Diego que nos encontramos todavía sin documentos, a pesar de todas las, las contribuciones a esta comunidad, incluyendo con nuestra labor, pagando taxes, con nuestra cultura, y no importa lo que hacemos, aún nos encontramos sin un pasillo a la ciudadanía. Este espacio, esta oficina, nos brindará un lugar donde nos sentiremos bienvenidos, donde no tendremos miedo de preguntar por recursos que son nuestros derechos. Eh, será una oficina que nos dará visibilidad, porque por muchos años nos hemos escondido, hemos tenido miedo de decir que no tenemos papeles por todo el, el, el odio que hemos tenido que soportar por muchos años. Este condado da un paso en buena dirección a proponer estas, estos espacios, estas oficinas, estos recursos que son absolutamente necesarios y que miramos que durante la pandemia nuestra comunidad siguió siendo ignorada y la, las pólizas federales que deberían de contribuir a nuestras comunidades de nuevo nos dejaron atrás. Este condado toma un paso adelante para proteger a nuestras familias. Entonces, le estamos muy agradecidos con el condado, con los supervisores por este cambio que nos dice que nosotros sí somos bienvenidos, que somos aceptados y que no solo vamos a sobrevivir una vida aquí en Estados Unidos, sino que vamos a hacer más que eso y que vamos a fluir en este país. So I really want to thank all, all of the organizations that are involved, the Board of Supervisors that are paying attention to our community because we are not feeling ignored anymore. This space is about visibility, it's about making us feel welcomed. For many years we have endured these attacks in our community and the county's taking a different direction of one that is welcomed, one where we don't feel afraid anymore. Thank you. Our, uh, our final speaker today is Executive Director for the Karen Organization of San Diego. Uh, the Executive Director, since 2009, this organization has been working to support refugees from Southeast Asia, uh, particularly Myanmar, uh, a country uh, I have uh, had the opportunity to visit and work in, uh, those who are fleeing violence and persecution, uh, and is now a part of the San Diego Refugee Community Coalition. Uh, please welcome their Executive Director now, Kabashima. Hello, my name is Nao Kabashima. Oh, like <laughs> Hello, my name is Nao Kabashima. I am executive director of the Karen Organization of San Diego, serving refugees from Burma or Myanmar. I am also here as a member of San Diego Refugee Community Coalition which is leading coordinated actions to ensure individual and families from many different refugee community members in San Diego are healthy, safe, and thriving. I truly believe that San Diego needs an Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs to make sure that voices and needs of refugee and immigrants community are heard for inclusive and equitable policy and system change in our region. I've been seeing many refugees struggling to survive even after many years living and working so hard in San Diego because our system is just so complicated and it is hard to navigate without language support, navigation support, or without truly knowing, understanding your rights. To provide holistic support for new San Diegans who are refugees and immigrants we need a coordinated effort to connect them with local services and county, state, and federal resources, not just for six months or a couple of years, but as ongoing support, because ongoing support for long-term refugee success is long-term support for San Diego's success as we all continue to contribute in our region. We all need to feel and deserve to feel that we belong here, we are welcomed here, but many refugees who are a huge part of our San Diego are from where their voices never heard, their existence is denied, and they are considered as not belonged. 
San Diego is different. That's why we need our Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs. Thank you. All right, again on uh, Tuesday, the Board of Supervisors will consider uh, voting on this policy. We hope the board will support this effort and uh, we can move forward with the creation of this office and all of our efforts uh, that we're doing countywide. At this point, we're happy to take any questions if there are any. What's the timeline that you might Yeah, so essentially if it passes, then we'll be directing staff to come up with the specifics uh, around what it looks like. We will be uh, allocating a couple million dollars in the budget to get it developed. Uh, in large part, the timeline will follow. If you remember, we did the Office of Equity and Racial Justice. We passed it, we funded it, they found a director. Once they had a director, the director put together the structure of the office and came back with regular updates. So it, it'll take a little bit, uh, but we, you know, we will establish it, we will fund it in the budget if we have the support, um, and then they'll go around hiring that first director and then build out the rest of the staff. Yep. All right, thank you everyone for joining us. We, uh, we appreciate it and, and look forward to tomorrow's vote. Thank you.